Hey guys, welcome back to Snow Kitchen here. It's me, Ella. It's been a while. I haven't made a video since um, last week's crochet talk. And that's because, um, life. <laughs> I had planned to film some videos this past weekend while Jesse was gone, and he ended up not going anywhere because his grandparents <clears throat> weren't able to watch him. They were. Devin's dad was feeling bad, and my mom was busy doing stuff. So it is, what is that? Today's Wednesday, March 20. Eighth. Um, I don't know if I'll put this video out today. I might do it tomorrow morning. But um, I have a hard time breathing. I think I'm, if I'm completely honest, I'm completely out of shape and I'm going to change that soon. <laughs> I have got to start working out again because I'm like, <clears throat> I'm breathing like a fat person. I know that sounds horrible, but gosh, I gotta work on my belly. <laughs> anyway, sidetrack. This is a crochet and chat video. Uh, you've seen it by the title and now uh, that we're into this uh, so already off so I don't even know what I'm saying now that we're in this video already a minute and I haven't even mentioned it let's get on to what I'm talking about I just realized by looking at myself that I have like a glare on my face and it's because my laptop's right here with my pattern pulled up on this crochet in chat I'm going to be making another little octopus only because I have two more pairs that are in here <laughs> Two more sets of um, little eyes. I'm not even sure what size they are. I ordered them from Amazon and they didn't. Um, they don't say what size they are. They're just little safety eyes. And I got two more sets of the little ones. So I'm going to make two more octopi. I'm going to make one this color. I thought about making one this color. But only if the. Uh, like one of these colored. Pink, blue, purple, green parts. End up where the eyes would be. Because if it's black on black, it wouldn't show up good. So I'm going to make two more octopi. So I'm going to go ahead and work on one while I'm chatting. <laughs> and like I said in my last video, I took everybody's... Um, this is my high-tech fancy way of doing it. <laughs> everybody's suggestions on the video I made the other day. Like a week or so ago. Probably like two weeks ago. Uh, about what to chat about. So I wrote them all in here and we'll pick the first one tonight. Hopefully it's a good one. I think they're all good. But mixing them up. Trying to. Alright, I'll get this one. <clears throat> oh, this is. <laughs> this. Um, there's probably gonna be more than one because this is like a short one. The first one is from Odd But Nice. So, hi. Um, I follow. I know I follow her on Instagram also and I tag her at all the giveaways and stuff. And she does me too. Well, I'm assuming you're a girl. I'm sorry if you're a boy. You may be a boy. Um, you're a subscriber, obviously. And it says to talk about yarns that I've been using lately and like. Um, you know, suggestions and stuff. So I'm gonna real quick get my hook onto my yarn because I didn't start it yet. Now I'm all tangled up. All right, excuse me. Yarns I've been using lately. Speaking of yarns, this one right here is a Premier yarn. I can't remember. I think it's just Premier. It's like one of those with a red label. I got this forever ago at Michaels, and I can't remember exactly. It's something confetti, I think. But it's a really rough yarn. I'm, I don't really like it at all. I bought it forever ago before I really got more picky about the way my yarn feels. But I've just been using it on amigurumis and stuff like my rabbit over there. His bow tie is made out of it. Yeah. And um, I think I made something else out of it. Did I make octopus already? I can't remember. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put six single crochets on my magic ring and talk about yarns. Well... I guess my favorite types of yarns are not necessarily my favorite, but my most used yarn is Red Heart Super Saver. Purely for the reason that it is easily to easy to obtain. You know, I have a Walmart in my town, and that's pretty much it, other than gas stations. Um, whoops. So, hold on, I had the lost count. <laughs> Only doing six, I lost count. So I do use a lot of Red Heart because I make a lot of amigurumis and decoration type things. I used to always make everything out of Red Heart just because, you know, it's all, you know, up until probably five or six years ago, I didn't even know about, like, yarn at craft stores and even yarn stores, you know, like, all by themselves and hand dyed and all that kind of stuff. So I just bought uh, Red Heart Super Saver or the occasional Karen uh, Simply Soft at Walmart because it was there <laughs> and um, 
I made blankets and everything, scarves, everything out of it. But as I've, you know, been around more yarns and dealt with them, I've learned that Red Heart Super Saver is pretty rough. There are some colors that are softer. I can't think of any. I, it seems like the variegated ones are rough, really rough, and the, um, the, is it the darker colors? I can't remember. Some of them are really rough, and like, you don't want to touch any, but some of them are soft. And I really, I really did love the Red Heart with Love that came out, but they quit selling it at my local Walmart. They clearanced it out and actually got some while it was on clearance. And then clearance it out. I know it is still available at some stores and online. But I hate ordering stuff online because I like, I'm an instant gratification kind of person. I want, um, sorry I was looking at the clock because Devin goes on lunch in a little bit and I'll have to message him. But, um, I like to go in a store and get something and, you know, fill it and go home, take it home with me that day. I don't like to, um, wait forever for it to come to my P.O. box. But, uh, uh, you know, I use, I still use a lot of Red Heart Super Saver. I have a ton of it left over from, you know, just buying it over the years. And I do, I do love it for ambergrimmies and decoration things. Things you're not touching all day long. And even scarves, because like I made a scarf actually out of this. This is Red Heart Super Saver Striped before the Stripes, like, series came out. And this is, ne is it neon? I can't remember if it's neon stripes or bright stripes. It's, it's one of the two. And it's actually a pretty soft one. I have a scarf made out of that and mittens. I never did get a chance to wear my mittens this year. It never really got that cold. But uh, I did wear the scarf. I've had it for a couple years and I wore it all the time. I love that scarf. I got a couple of hats made out of Red Heart Super Saver. I have a hat made out of Red Heart Super Saver Blacklight, which I really love that yarn the way it looks, but it's not exactly the nicest filling yarn. But I do have a hat made out of it that I wear a lot, but it does kind of get scratchy around my forehead where it lays. So that kind of sucks, but it is pretty. <laughs> I still wear it anyways. It just, if I get sweaty or something, it starts getting itchy. But yeah, my favorite yarn that is a cheap yarn that I would love to use all the time if I could buy it would be uh, Hobby Lobby's. I love this yarn. I love how soft it is. Like every one of it's soft and squishy, and it's just—it's such a—it just glides along the hook. I think it like I, with with a Susan Bates hook, and I love this yarn. I can make a project so much faster than with a Susan Bates or a boy with Red Heart, and it just—it just seems to. What am I trying to say? It's just—it goes better. I don't know. It glides better along the hook. The, do you got do you blah, blah, blah. I can't talk I can't con concentrate my mind's running really fast tonight um Jesse's gone by the way he's on mom's I forgot to tell him mention that but um and Devin's at work and uh, Catherine the little girl that I she's not really little anymore the girl that I babysit she just left a little while ago she's on spring break but um what was I saying I love this yarn <laughs> and I have tried some Yarn bee from Hobby Lobby. Let's see here. I had a baby yarn bee that was really nice to work with. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but I made a cute little baby sweater out of it. Uh, my sister wanted it for her uh, nephew in law. He was having a baby. Well, you know, his girlfriend was having a baby, and it turned out adorable. It was cute, and it was a really nice yarn to work with. And I also had a yarn bee. Heather talked about it in her last video. Or one of her recent videos, it wasn't her last one. I can't remember what it was called. It was like Aurora Borealis something. <laughs> it's a really pretty purpley, bluey color. Beautiful yarn. I made a hat of it and I love the hat. I wear it a lot. You may have even seen it in some of the uh, Vlogmas videos. I can't remember if I wore any of them or not. But it was a really nice yarn. It's real soft and smooth and it worked really good. I haven't tried all the yarn bees, but I've tried those too. <laughs> Maybe another one, I don't know. And there's another brand at Hobby Lobby called Crafter Secret. It's kind of like Red Heart yarn. It's cheaper than I love this yarn too, because I love this yarn 
was normally $3.99, I think. I think it's supposed to be going up though. I don't know for sure. I haven't been back to Mahomie Lobby. But the Crafter Seeker is like two something. So it's cheaper than all this yarn. And it's got some colors that all this yarn doesn't have. That's another reason I love Red Heart is because there's like every color possible just about a Red Heart. Whereas all of this yarn, even though it's nice um, like quality and texture and all that, they don't have all the colors. They do have more color, you know, different colors than Red Heart, but not some of the same ones, you know? Does that make any sense? And I did get a Olive Yarn Orange. No, it's red, and it's called red. No, no, no. It's orange. It says orange on it, and it's supposed to be orange, but it's really red. It's like a really red orange. Whereas, you know, Red Heart Super Sever has a very orangey orange. So, it's just different brands, different colors, I guess. Let's see what I'm on. This octopus is probably going to turn out weird looking because I'm <laughs> making it while talking. I'm not used to talking a lot while I crochet. Um, things that aren't just like blankets and back and forth. I haven't really crocheted a lot this week and you'll see that in my, in my video. It comes out Friday. But it's just because we've been really busy and stuff. So, But I'm trying to get back in on the crochet wagon. What other yarns have I tried? Um, I'm not a huge fan of cotton and there's no... I'm sure there's lots of great cotton out there. I just haven't really tried a lot of cotton. I've tried peaches and cream. Is that what it's called? And the other one. Peaches and cream and then another one. I've tried both of those normal cottons. Like the one that's out at Walmart and the Hobby Lobby one. And I just don't like the way it splits. All the cotton I've messed around with has been real splitty. I'm not a big fan of the way it feels, and I don't really make the kind of things cotton is needed for to need cotton. <laughs> so, I have made a few um, dish cloths, which I do love them. They work awesome. But, um, like, I'm probably not going to buy a ton of cotton and just make everything out of cotton. I know a lot of people do make um, their amigurumis out of cotton, and that's great. <laughs> For them, but I don't. I have no interest. I'm just gonna stick to my acrylics for amigurumis, and uh, go from there. And I've not. I've not tried many fancy yarns. The fanciest yarn I ever had was um, my eyes are hurting. Was a Wonderland yarn, and it was the one that I made Hannah's um, shawl out of the Treasure Island shawl. I got it when we were on vacation in Gatlinburg last May, and it was, it is a, a wool, um, yarn, I'm trying, I can't remember if it's a blend, I don't have the label anymore, but yeah, it was, it was super wash, I think, um, and it was nice, it was nice to work with, it was really small, it was a finger weight, which is not a fun, I don't like small, like I like DK weight, and worsted weight, and those are my favorite. <laughs> I will dabble dabble in like a bulkier stuff. Like I am, I did start a project this week with Burnett Blanket. <laughs> I think I made like my hook off. But um, I don't really like working with the bulky stuff. It hurts my hands. Well, you know, the hook, holding the big hook hurts my hands. I got my stitch marker. I keep dropping it and it keeps sliding down my leg. I'm gonna grab some water real fast. Um. I'm trying to think of other yarns I've used. I've used a couple of like random ones, like this Premier one. I don't like this. I'm sure not all the Premier yarn is this way, but this particular one is real scratchy and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, okay, this is where I'm going to get confused. Let me bring up a notepad real fast so that I can. So I got to do a bunch of rows. Um single crochet around and I don't want to accidentally leave the place. Okay, there. But, I don't know. I'm getting really, I haven't really tried a lot of yarns. Like, I want to try a bunch of the different Bernat yarns. I've, I've played with Bernat, um, I guess Baby. The really thin little, I made, I started to make af or a little blanket for Jesse before he was born. But then he was born, and I never finished, and I ended up uh, ripping it out. And I had multiple balls of Bernat baby yarn, and I ended up donating it because I 
had it for like two years and never used it. So I figured I might as well just do it to someone who might use it. And I did the same thing with some cotton. I had a bunch of cotton that I had intended to make like Christmas themed dishcloths and stuff with and never got around doing it. So I just donated it. Um, I, I like the Lion Brand Mandala. I think it's a beautiful yarn and I don't mind the sudden changes in colors. I really like it. The only thing I don't like about it is in the gnome colorway, I don't like that weird muddy green and purple in between the green and purple because it gets just real, you know, all the rest of it is all nice, bright, and pretty, and then there's just that really muddy green and purple in there. But other than that, it's fine. And I didn't make a blanket and a, uh, like a boho vest, and uh, they turned out nice. I can't think, I don't think, let's see here. I would like to try some more Lime Brand and Burnett yarns. I would like to try some Karen Cakes, but I just haven't ever bought any. I did buy some Whatever Sweet Rose. Who makes that? Something Sweet Rose. Premier Sweet Love? Is it Premier? Premier Sweet Love? Rose? I have four of them, and I started working with two of them and ended up ripping out the projects, but I did like the yarn. Because it's, um, it's like a thicker worsted weight. It's like a, I don't know, borderline number five weight yarn. It's bouncy. It's real bouncy. <laughs> I liked it. Um, I just, every, the projects I had picked out for it weren't what I wanted to make, you know. Like, I started it, and I realized that's not what this yarn is meant to be. So, I am holding on to them. I'd like to make blankets or something with them, but I'd have to get more, um, well, what are they called? Cakes. <laughs> I got a purple and white one. I think it's called Gelato Pop or something like that. And then I got a gray and white one. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called Silver, Silver something. <laughs> silver, sil silver Pop, Silver Stripe, something like that. I don't know. But, um, I do like them. We actually, I actually took them on... Well, the gray, the gray and white ones on the Gatlinburg trip. Uh, and I started a blanket, but I frogged it. I think that's about all the yarn <laughs> I've ever really messed around with. And my favorites, you know, always Red Heart. And I love this yarn. And I guess, you know, I will eventually branch out and try more. Especially since um, the town next to me where our Hobby, Hobby Lobby is, we're getting a Michaels the end of this year. Around... It's supposed to open in November, but we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully it will. They're constructing the mall right now that it's going to be in. So I'll be able to have access to more yarns without having to travel real far. Because right now the closest Michaels and Joann's to me is an uh, hour or so away. About an hour, yeah. And uh, I do go into those stores when we're on trips to places that have them there. <laughs> But I don't ever make like specific trips just to go there. So it'll be nice to have a Michaels close by that'll have a bunch of different yarns that I can try when I have just extra money to spend on new yarns. Because I, I really do want to try some Karen cakes out and make some blankets or something. <sighs> Gosh, I feel like I'm out of breath. I know it's because I'm so out of shape. I got to lose, got to get into shape and lose some weight. <laughs> Jesse made me fat. <laughs> I made me fat while I was pregnant with Jesse. And then I kept a lot of it. <laughs> but I gained um, 52 pounds when I was pregnant with him. And then the, the day that I had him, I immediately lost 30 something of it. Because like that was him and all the fluid and the placenta. His placenta was ginormous. Even the doctor said it was huge. Um, it took the doctor to, because I wanted to see it, it took the doctor to hold it up like that, and she was struggling. It was a huge placenta. It was about as big as he was. That's totally off subject. <laughs> but there was a lot of fluid and stuff, I guess, with any pregnancy. But that night, I remember I weighed myself, and I was already down 30-something pounds just from having him. So, but ever since then, I've kept the 20-something and maybe added a few more pounds. <laughs> But, um, now that he's older and can play more, like, independently, you know, walk and play in a park and stuff while I'm doing stuff, I can, in theory, uh, walk for exercise 
why him and Catherine are playing this summer. In theory. I also want to get an elliptical machine because I think that would be easier on my knees than a treadmill. So I used to run a lot and I enjoyed it, but it was really hard on my knees. And uh, so I want to get an elliptical. That's totally a sidetrack, but hey, that's okay. We're just chatting. It's like friends in the living room chatting. I think they're color pulling a little bit. That's neat. I love it when they color pull by accident. I tried color pulling on purpose and I never could get it to work. And after ripping it out a few times, I just get aggravated and uh, give up. Alright, let's put this up there because I did it. Let's go ahead and grab another one out. Maybe it'll be a, another quick one because i got to hop off here a little bit and message Devin. There's a little boy outside. Alright, this is from Beth McCormick. And she wants to know more information about project bags, uh, the ones I make. I just made one today. I finished it. I already sewed the bag together and today I made the, uh, the casing for the drawstrings. And, um sold them on and then put the dress right start so I gotta mail it off to someone tomorrow morning Barbara if you're watching it's for you <laughs> it's really cute I like it I kinda wanted to keep it for myself but I'm gonna send it to you <laughs> because I made it for you anyways the pattern uh, let me find the let me go quick the real fast I found it just on YouTube one day when I was getting interested in um, making my own project bags I you know I just looked it up <laughs> I just typed in something to the effect of um, bags that you can make with fat quarters because at the time that's all I had was fat quarters Where is that shelter? and um, a few popped up and I watched a bunch of tutorials and there's a lot of nice ones out there it's just this one that I found <laughs> Well, like the easiest one. Well, it looked the easiest. There, it might not be as easy as some of the other ones, but it's a super easy pattern. Let's see here. Uh, it's always linked below. It's in my description box. But it is how to make that, how to make that drawstring bag, quilting tips and techniques 152, by a channel called Gourmet Quilter. I've never watched any other videos but that one. <laughs> But it's a really good tutorial and um, a lot of the times before I like had the pattern memorized for the bag in my head I would play it while sewing just to remember you know like the next step that I needed to do I'm getting there it's starting to look like a little head actually I'll turn it inside out it's pulling in like a swirly fashion that's neat but um yeah the original pattern for that bag calls for two fat quarters one for a liner and one for the outside and then you trim it a little bit and when you trim it the trimmings becomes the uh, drawstring casing and in the tutorial they make things to put on the end of the drawstrings but I've never done that because I ain't got time for that <laughs> I don't care if it has the strings covered or not I just knot them <laughs> and go from there but um yeah it's let's see here it's a 29 minute tutorial it's real Oh, a lot, or quite a bit of the beginning part is just her talking about it. But, um, it's a really easy pattern. I mean, I think you, uh, I can't remember their exact measurements, but I could always fold my fat quarter in half twice. You know, I fold it and then fold it. <laughs> and I cut it 7 inches by 10 inches. And, uh, that's the size that it comes out to. It'll be 14 by 20 for um my bags and then sometimes i box the corners sometimes i don't i haven't branched out to any other bag uh patterns i have a few more that i want to try and i really want to learn how to make bucket bags because like erin at uh give me on 148 i think that's what it is she makes them and they're just really awesome looking bags because they're like a a circular you know bucket shape and but they have a drawstring that closes on it's real cool and it has handles I just don't really want to make those. I don't really know what else I can say about my bags other than that. Um, I can't really make a tutorial about it because uh, it's hers and there's already a tutorial. A tutorial and it's a good one. You know, I think it's a good one. I guess if you want to make it and you go watch that tutorial and you have issues and you can ask me a question about it and I can try to help you. But, um, 
some of the ones that I make though I double it I I cut all my fat quarters like I would pick four two for the inside and two for the outside and I measure them you know I cut them seven by ten again and but then I sew them together um the two long sides together to make a what would that be I sewed the two long sides together it would be 20 inches tall by 28 inches wide is that right I think that's right <laughs> and that makes the bigger size bags um and I just did that because you know the the tutorial it comes out a really small bag kind of like a sock size bag I do use it I have one I made one that way before I started making them bigger uh, and I do use it for like when I make Christmas ornaments or little amigurumis or things like that but I do like this size this is with four and this has got the box bottom this is a good size for just about anything else I make it all fits in there so far and I did actually one of them turned out bigger because I think I sewed it together a different way or cut it different but I don't know I meant to make it the same way so I messed up and didn't even realize that I made it different until it got done Ugh. I feel like my nose is getting stuffy that's pretty much all I can say about the project bags like I don't know what else you wanted to know um, if you want to be more specific Beth you can ask another question about it but yeah I like them and I do want to try to find more bag patterns eventually oh I did make one different one I made that lined one I had it out earlier but it's put up now um, it's the cat one that's got and this super snappy in it it's lined with a zipper and it was I watched a tutorial but then I just kind of winged my own pattern I kind of followed the tutorial a little bit like it was in my brain but I didn't really follow it word for word and I just made it and it's an okay bag but I gotta work on my sewing skills because the zipper wasn't sewed on quite right so it's a little hard to open and close but it does open and close it's just rough <laughs> But, yeah, I want to make more bags. I do prefer drawstring over zipper bags because zipper bags, I'm afraid my yarn's going to get stuck in on a project and get pulled or something. And drawstring bags, you know, you don't have that issue. And plus, with a drawstring bag, you can have it pulled shut like this. But, you know, there, you can still have a piece of yarn coming through the little hole right there. So, you can keep your yarn in the bag but be working, you know, outside. And I do do that a lot. And the other project bag that I do use a lot, well I have two, one is not available anymore and it's the limited edition snappy bag, I think that's what it's called, it, it was a snappy tots pattern that was available uh, months ago, but it's no longer available, it was limited edition, and it's a crochet bag, I like it a lot, and then the other one is the crocheting public bag, which is also small, like a sock size, but it hangs off your arm, and I've used that a lot, uh, while making amigurumis or Christmas ornament type things while Jesse's here because I can walk around with him because he likes just when I get up and walk around with him even if I'm not really playing with him but while he's playing and I just kind of walk around the house with him and then I can just walk around and crochet right out of that bag and I like that a lot or I will sometimes like if I'm rolling yarn into a ball like a floppy skein half use skein I'll put it in the bag and then I'll just walk around you know rolling it into a ball out of that bag and it's real easy that way. Single crochet three and then decrease. Okay. I'm on the de decreasing part. This is it so far. I do gotta turn it inside out. Look how it pulled. Isn't that cool? I love when it color pulls by accident. It turns out cool. So yeah. That's all my project bag stuff <laughs> that I could think of. If you have more specific questions about project bags, you can, you can leave it below and I will try to answer it better. Or if you have more specific questions about the yarns that I use, but I use pretty much basic yarns. I'm a basic kind of person. <laughs> um, I do. I would like to switch over and start using more. I love this yarn for just the point that it's softer than Red Heart, but. And if I ever make any more blankets, I'm going to lean more towards the of this yarn. I am working on the Christmas pixel graph thingy from Ter that Terry Houston. And it's a mixture of I love this yarn plus Mainstays plus Red Heart. Oh, Mainstays is another yarn that I use. But um, 
I'm going to line it with felt so it will be softer on the back side. Hopefully. <laughs> and um, mainstays. It's a pretty decent yarn. I've only used the red, the black, and the gray. But they're soft. I think they're really soft. They're a lot softer than Red Heart. But they have weird, like, fuzzy. I can't describe it, but it's almost like it's like a foggy color to it. Like the colors aren't vibrant. They're like, I don't even know how to, to describe it. Next time we're at Walmart, look at it and you'll kind of get what I'm talking about. It's just kind of like a weird color hue to them. But, um, I, I have used some of it and I do enjoy it. It's not, you know, it's a good, it's a decent yarn and it's really cheap. It's like a dollar something a uh, skein. I just stretched 30 minutes and Devin should be going to lunch soon so I really need to hop off here and uh, wait for him to text. Let's see here if I messed up. One, two, three. Decrease. Nope. I had the right amount of stitches. Woo! -hoo. So this is my little octopus head. Hey, that's so cute. I love it when it pulls like that by accident. Ain't that cool? The top's all multicolor but the sides striped. <laughs> But I'm going to hop off here and go ahead and finish this little guy because he, you know, these little octopuses, <laughs> octopies, whatever you want to call them, they work up super duper fast. I've made seven or eight and I got two more to make just to use up the eyeballs. And then I'm going to, I'm going to try to make, um, a couple jellyfish, like maybe three or four of the larger jellyfish that were real big a couple of years ago. And I, I do, I would like to make some more of the zero, uh, loveys and the little zero dolls. And then I think that's about all that I'm going to make for this, um, Earth Day event. But I do want to, like, subconsciously work on a bunch of things for the Christmas thing that's coming up later this year. Because I might try to do that. I don't know. We shall see. But I'm going to hop off here because it's 32 minutes and Devin's about to go to lunch. I already said that, like, twice. And, um, I hope you guys like this episode of Crochet and Chat. And I hope you had fun crocheting along with me. I love it. I, I think it's fun just sitting here talking and, you know, knowing that you guys are just chilling at home crocheting or wherever. And the next episode, I still got a bunch in here. But if you have any more um, ideas for topics, just leave them below and I will add them to my nice fancy high tech way of picking out <laughs> topics. And maybe yours will get drawn in the next video. And, uh, yeah, that's everything, I guess. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Which will be sometime. I'm about to film two more videos tonight while Jesse's gone. So I may be wearing the same clothes. But they'll be out on different days. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.